Bună seara, dragi prieteni și bine ați revenit la Dialoguri între minte și inimă. În această seară avem un uh, invitat cu totul special și uh, s-ar putea să fie chiar o surpriză foarte plăcută pentru dumneavoastră. Ne face plăcere să uh, avem în uh, mijlocul nostru, în studioul nostru, pe profesorul, învățătorul uh, tradițional de Yoga și Vedanta, Sri Yogeshwar Kartik. Hello, uh, Yogeshwar. Welcome Hello. in our show. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, și pe uh, prietenul meu și al emisiunii noastre, avocatul Nick Namțu. Bine ai venit. Uh... Bună seara, Ștefan. Bine te-am găsit. Bine ai venit, Nick, Hello, încă o dată. Hello, Yogeshwar. Hello, uh, În această seară, așa cum vă spuneam, este o emisiune cu totul specială. Uh, pentru cei uh, care nu-l cunoașteți încă pe Sri Yogeshwar, uh, am să vă spun în câteva cuvinte cine este domnia sa. De fapt, am să vă uh, citesc o scurtă prezentare ca să știți cu cine aveți de-a face. Yogeshwar este un învățător spiritual, expert în yoga și facilitator al clarității în multiplele aspecte ale existenței. În prezent, el conduce clase de yoga și vedanta în cadrul primului ashram urban din București, concentrându-se asupra potențialului spiritual al practicanților. Începând din septembrie 2011, a susținut în România o serie de conferințe, seminarii, workshopuri pe teme diverse, yoga, ayurveda, ayurveda fiind știința medicinii străvechi indiene, inclusiv în cadrul festivalului Namaste India. De asemenea, a filmat ca invitat special pentru serialul 2013 The Year After, produs de Video Light Production și, în, și a fost oaspete în matinalul de la TVR Cluj. Yogesh Varkartik s-a născut în sudul Indiei, provincia Chennai, unde a studiat și a fost inițiat de-a lungul anilor în multiplele practici yoghine, tantrice, vedice, practicând meditația, și contemplația, așa cum sunt deschis, descrise în textele indiene clasice ale Vedantei. În transmiterea practicii yoga urmează tradiția Sida, iar în uh, transmiterea învățăturii și cunoașterii, tradiția Avaita a lui Sri Adi Shankara. Este bine cunoscut în India, ca și în Canada, America, Marea Britanie, Sri Lanka, Malaezia, datorită emisiunii TV Yoga Kalai, pe care a găzduit-o zilnic, timp de peste 12 ani, între 1999 și 2011. Această emisiune este printre primele programe pe teme yoga de la televiziunea indiană, fiind remarcată pentru conținutul unic în transmiterea învățăturii yoga din perspectiva transformării personale. Uh, so, uh, Yogeshwar, yes. hello again. Hello. Uh, I'm... Uh, very very glad that uh, we have the opportunity of having you in uh, our TV show because of uh, many many reasons uh, first you. first of all uh, before uh, the Romanian revolution before 1989 uh, you are not allowed to practice yoga here in Romania Mm, not allowed or there was some problems issues uh, or it was really you, not allowed you could get in some big problems if okay, you okay. Uh, would uh, be doing this publicly okay so it was very restricted okay okay uh, and uh, the first uh, five years of my yoga practice uh, uh, were uh, in the in my room just okay. in my room before 89 uh, and uh, this is one of the reasons And the second reason uh, is that um, it's a rare opportunity to have an authentic spiritual teacher uh, here in Romania. And it's an opportunity that uh, many people should uh, use, that more people should yes, yes. use. And, um, and I'm very glad uh, that there is an openness and interest in authentic spiritu traditional spirituality. Uh, there uh, is great interest in authentic spirituality yes. uh, and uh, we should take into account that uh, here uh, I, I can say in Europe there is a uh, lot of uh, new age spirituality mm -hmm. 
which is yeah. uh, in India also. India also. Yes. 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 Oh, I'm very surprised too. Yes. Yes. Uh, in India also, the spirituality, the traditional spirituality we are talking about, it is only in select pockets. Everywhere else, it is a tokanitsa. A bad tokanitsa. Aha, a tokanitsa, okay. Uh, <laughs> we say kichidi, a bad kichidi. <laughs> <laughs> one of my so, friends uh, mm -hmm. says uh, spiritual fast food. Fast food, exactly. Exactly. That fast food attitude is catching up even among Brahmins. It's, it's yes. very sad. Oh. Yes, yes. Really? Yes, yes, yes very much. It's too, too bad to hear that. And uh, The British have done what they wanted to do. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. that's too bad. That's a contribution of them. Yeah, so uh, tonight we want to hear about uh, good spirituality. Definitely, definitely. About uh, exact spirituality. And uh, my first question for you would be, which was your first contact to real spirituality? How was your childhood in India? Because you, you come from a different culture. Yes, yes, yes. But, but not so different. Because on, on, uh, there is a good link between Romania and your country. Yeah, this on, this on I found when I came here. Soul and heart level. Yes, yeah, definitely. The sentimental level, uh, Romania and India are much closer than the other part of the West and India. Yes, I, I have also noticed the same uh, thing. We are, we are very well connected. And I have felt this from the first second that I, I have seen you here in, uh, in the studio. Okay. I, I had the, okay. same, uh, the same feeling when, uh, when I saw you. Oh, nice. Uh, okay, so how was your childhood and how was about you and spirituality? Mm -hmm. At what age? In what conditions? The spirituality, for me, Yes, it's, uh, from a personal yes, standpoint. Yes, yes, from a personal standpoint, it comes by birth itself, because uh, being born in a Brahmin family, mm -hmm. your spirituality unconsciously begins. If you want to consider that a child in Romania is baptized, okay, is the first spiritual experience for the child. Of course. If you would consider that, then for me the spiritual experience starts from the time my father made love to my mom. Okay. At the time of conception, there is a ritual. So we have the concept of samskara. So the spiritual mm -hmm. uh, touch, giving a spiritual touch to a person, mm -hmm. is called samskara. Samskara means a purifying a ritual or a spiritual initiation or a giving a spiritual touch using incantations and invoking the grace of the Lord. For example, your baptism can be considered botes, is considered mm -hmm, as a mm -hmm. it can be considered as a samskara. Yes. So we have a samskara starting from the time of the conception. When the man impregnates the woman, mm -hmm. it is called the garbadhanam, giving the gift of the womb. Okay. So that a priest goes inside the nuptial chamber and he does the certain rituals and mantras and they fix an auspicious time for the husband and wife to come together. So that is where my spirituality begins. That's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes after death also. So this is how we see spirituality. So every aspect, every major aspect of the life is taken care of spiritually. So that is the great gift that we have by being born in the Vedic culture. Yes, it's a great gift uh, and, uh, of, of And my your mother yes. uh, goes through a certain samskara when she is pregnant in the eighth month, eighth or the tenth month. Uh, eighth month is called Simantam. Mm -hmm. uh, where they put certain herbal formulations uh, empowered by incantations through the nose for the health of the fetus uh -huh. and okay. a lot of uh, charity and a lot of uh, creating good vibrations for the fetus, all that comes in the eighth mm -hmm. month of mm -hmm. pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And then after I am born, the tenth day uh, is the day when they give me the name. Okay. Uh, uh, and there is a lot of rituals there. And uh, the first year we go and uh, remove the hair in the family deity's shrine. Like in Christian uh, rituals also. I heard about this. Yes, uh, we, we also have so, this kind okay. of ritual. Yeah. And this comes basically from the pre-Christian tradition. Christianity as such, whatever the ritualistic aspect you have, mm -hmm. wherever Christianity is, if you have to see the pre-Christian traditions in that place, so they have borrowed all the rituals from them. Yes, and it's, after, it's after digesting the original culture, mm -hmm. they sustain a few elements of the original culture to keep the people happy, and so it goes on. Mm -hmm. But it's good. Somehow, it's something is there at least. Mm -hmm. you know? So now here, uh, that, that uh, giving the name, and then after that, the first year, it goes on. So the major conscious spiritual initiation, I would say, 
So okay. all this goes unconsciously. Uh, you are a baby, you yeah. don't know what yes, is going on. Yes, but very interesting that you have told uh, us. But all this, it is like a seed. Mm -hmm. A seed is there. If you consider a person like a plant, a seed mm -hmm. is put and then you give the conditions and everything and then it sprouts. And then you provide the fence, the nourishment, it mm -hmm. goes more and more and more. After a certain point of time, the tree can assert itself. The plant can assert itself. Till that time, the plant needs to be protected. Okay. But we cannot say that the other aspects are not part of the plants growing up. So the moment I plant the seed, from there onwards, the growing process starts. So the first part of the spirituality provides the conditions for us to grow spiritually. Okay. And then when we grow to a certain point where we can make a conscious decision, we are initiated into the, when we know what's going on, you know, we can make some sense. We are initiated into the Gayatri Mantra, what is called as uh, the, the essence of all the Vedas. That is the mantra which we chant. The Gayatri prayer. Mantra, yes. Gayatri okay. Mantra, the meaning of the Gayatri Mantra is, I invoke that Supreme Light, which mm -hmm. guides our thinking and actions. Mm -hmm. May that effulgence of that Supreme, unlit, original, self-existent light, may that guide our thinking and actions. May it illumine my intellect. This is the, may it illumine our intellect. Not okay. my intellect. Okay. May that illumine our intellect. So that is the mantra. They gave me this mantra. At what age? To pray for the whole world. Ideally, they should give it uh, when I am five years old. But mm -hmm. uh, for me, it was given when I was uh, 13 years old. Much later. Yes, because that is the result of the corruption of the culture. So I, what is uh -huh. ideally supposed to be done is not being done. In fact, mm -hmm. I am very lucky. There are many Brahmins who don't get this mantra till the day before marriage because the marriage the priest will say you unless you have the thread you cannot do the fire rituals for marriage mm -hmm. so they put the thread one day before marriage it's very sad but the original version is we have the different uh, classes of people the brahmin mm -hmm. then the warrior cavalier class and then the uh, vaishya or the business class mm -hmm. according to the class of uh, varna according to the birth and the jati and the varna of the person varna means uh, it is not caste exactly. Varna would come under the temperament and the family circumstances, cul family culture and the personal temperament of the individual. Mm -hmm. Based on that, we have fixed a certain age by which this samskara of initiation should be done. Okay. Where they give you a thread, you know, we all wear a certain kind of, a, it's called a punal. This is the thread. Uh -huh. uh, so it is called Yajna Upavitam. Yajna Upavitam means the adjunct that allows you to perform spiritual actions. Okay. So that qualifies you to enter the spiritual. So that, that is the entry into spir the formal spiritual entry world. into yes. the spiritual practice. And then after that, I am required to do certain rituals every day. Three times in a day, I am supposed to do uh, the worship, uh, be in touch with the totality through a proper procedure. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am supposed to do some fire ritual called Samitha Dana. My father helped me with all that. They fixed a priest to teach me all the rituals. And so uh -huh. it, that's how it goes. And Very for me, in my family atmosphere, my father is a professional um, spiritual, uh, what do you say, a speaker, a discourse giver. He gives uh, spiritual discourses, public discourse, spiritual okay. public discourse. So he's a A-grade artist in uh, All India Radio for spiritual discourse. Mm -hmm. So he's one of the well-known people and uh, he's a great uh, scholar in our scriptures. So I grew up in this atmosphere of uh, spiritual discussion. So for the example, they want to scold me. I do a mischief. They will not scold me, hey, stupid. They don't scold me like that. Uh -huh. They will quote from the scripture two lines. Okay. This is how you should act, not like what you are doing. Uh -huh. Okay, so they use the authority of the scriptures yes, like to, they will to show they, you the, yes, the yes. good way in uh, Yes, yes. Uh, they will say, like, for example, uh, uh, if, if I fight with some, if, if I am trying to spoil a friend, me and my friend, mm -hmm. we are trying to spoil each other, mm -hmm. my father will come and tell us what are you doing and then he will say, friendship is not for uh, smiling and having fun, friendship is for stopping the other person when he is going beyond the limit. That is what a friend is here for. That is the saying from a classical text called Trikural, which is 3000 years old. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in this atmosphere. So, and uh, by the time I was three or four, my granny has already taught me the stories of Ramayana, Mahabharata. So all the uh -huh. values, everything is in the system, you know. <laughs>
very so I, i was lucky so it is god's grace you i was very in this lucky. Yes. yes but this is not the general situation of most indians it is not like that what is the situation for them it depends on the family how much they have gone far away from the culture but still proportionately when compared to the west yes the exposure to authentic spirituality is far far higher in india than anywhere else in the world even today that is if you are not born as a uh, in a christian or a converted christian or a muslim family mm-hmm. if you are born into any of the hindu family mm-hmm. then this is how it is i see um it's uh, it's very interesting for uh, for us to find out uh, this in things. india if in india if you are born in a christian or a muslim family in india it's very unfortunate because they are not like the christians here what what's the difference a huge difference because they are Uh, they are they are more sectarian and fanatic they are not like here oh. you will see the serenity for example if you meet a parinte or a kalugar mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. they look like yogis they walk like yogis i was surprised for the first time mm-hmm. all my childhood when i saw the christians in india it was very uh, very disturbing mm-hmm. they are completely anti anti national and they are very anti hindu and anti local culture they don't oh. they, they they are like completely they don't assimilate themselves and they are all the time trying to uh, create trouble christianity is very okay here in romania because we, here is the we, predominant religion we do religion. very fine uh, with christianity and, a, and also it is very different from the christianity i am exposed to in the west the orthodox is mm. much more ritualistically more pure and uh, austere when compared to the other denominations of christianity yes so, that is yes, true yes and there is a more of a mystic element that is what i said when i see a uh, parinte or a kaluga Mm-hmm. they have that yogic element the austerity that, that shows that familiar uh, look yes that uh, a person of austerity you know that standing mm-hmm. tall mm-hmm. that i could see here for the first time in a christian i have never seen that in my life very interesting the, so that was very impressive for me in romania i i've noticed uh, something very interesting uh, you have the sun salutation surya namaskar yes yes it and is a sun salutation is not part of the hatha yoga basically it comes from the vedic culture yes i uh, told you about the three times rituals i do in the in every day yes. i'm supposed to do their sun salutation is part of that how how many you do each time how many sun salutation uh, uh, no in the in the sandhya vandanam which is the everyday ritual yes. we are supposed to do 12 times namaskara it is connected with the 12, uh, 12 phases of the sun aha uh-huh. okay 12 and kalas of the surya mm-hmm. mandala and yes. 12 times three times a day or 12 times it will not be times. like the hatha yoga what we say it is a certain aha uh, uh-huh. for month, you for you is another meaning of the ritual it is a uh, it is more ritualistic it is not like a hatha yoga mhm mhm it's more it's ritual. more ritualistic and making some prostrations it will look more like a namas of a muslim uh-huh it will be similar to that here here we have uh, in christian uh, orthodox church uh, monks have a ritual which is very similar to surya namaskar okay it is called metani amare oh what is that uh, it's like surya namaskar okay and, and i was very surprised to find out this uh, this thing because i read about surya namaskar that uh, it's first mentioned in ramayana a form of it Am, am it's I not right? first mentioned it is mentioned in ramayana because ramayana is a itihasa mm-hmm. it talks about certain elements which are part of the vedic culture okay in a story form for a common lay person to assimilate okay for women and uh, the common lay person who is not initiated into the vedic esoterics and how old is uh, how old is surya namaskar in your culture ah. you, you know do you, this is a very good question a very good question how old is we don't go historically this is very important when we approach hinduism okay we don't approach it historically at all there is no history because what, what do you have instead exactly, of history exactly we have the concept of time which is completely another dimension to how they understand here sequentially we okay. have a concept of uh, yuga okay. satya yuga treta yuga dwapara yuga it is a great era mm-hmm. then maha era the maha yuga is a combination mm-hmm. of many yugas then a manvantara and mm-hmm. then we have kalpa and it's a creation cycle and veda is considered as the blueprint of the creation cycles okay veda is eternal knowledge which is not part of time time itself comes based on veda Veda does not come in time and it is not composed by a person it is called apaurushayam apaurushayam means not made by a person so veda is not made by a person veda is 
mm -hmm. a seer with a extraordinary power by birth or uh, by some austerities he becomes a, somebody becomes a seer mm -hmm. they are able to grasp the knowledge the information the knowledge yes and become like a wire you know they are able to transmit the knowledge through them mm -hmm. and it is veda and it is preserved in the form of sound and in the form of mantras and the veda has a lot of other parts which includes the way of life okay so the, unless a person has a very dedicated way of life the person is not qualified to study veda correctly veda is not based on time you cannot say how old it is because it is as old as the universe i understand so that is how we approach it because the source is god and god is eternal veda is eternal that is a very correct answer we uh, yes so we'll the surya namaskar as a practice is part of the vedic karmakanda karmakanda means the vedic uh, ritualistic portion of the veda which talks about your practical everyday uh, applied applied spirituality mm -hmm. so in that it has been there all the time I understand so <laughs> very interesting answer you you amazed me uh, will we'll because this a... angle is not explored no they are they are always succumbing when the westerners came to india and tried to study the indian culture mm -hmm. they studied the indian culture based on their framework yes it's... and they were very arrogant to try to fit another culture in their frame, framework they did not try to understand what the is the framework is... of the local culture mm -hmm. that's what they did with the dachic civilization also here Yes. The way they present Dachians are barbarians, you know. Are they barbarians? And, and it was not true. Who obviously. are the barbarians? We know. So uh, the Dachians, the evolution of the Dachians was tried to the same thing they did with India. In this way, also we are very similar. <laughs> yes, yes. We'll we'll have a short break now, and yes. we we'll come back to this subject later at the at the end of the show because you you brought uh, some very interesting material for yes. uh, thank you for us. Sure. Rubrica terapii pentru trup și suflet, alături de invitații noștri, Sri Yogeshwar Kartik, profesor tradițional de yoga și Vedanta și avocatul Nicu Neamțu, Nic Neamțu, prietenul nostru. Am să adresez prima întrebare invitatului nostru, se va referi la yoga ca terapie. Uh, Yogeshwar, yes. uh, what do you think uh, about yoga as a therapy and what are the benefits, the main benefits of practicing hmm. yoga from the therapeutical point of view? In fact, uh, the technical aspect of yoga, yes. the Hatha Yoga, what is popularly called as this, uh, what physically people do, asana, Mm -hmm. So this part is fundamentally therapy. Okay. Because it starts with cleansing, where your body's uh, three um, what is called as the three humors. They say, no, the, the three dhatus, vata, mm pitta, -hmm. kapha. In mm -hmm. okay, Ayurveda. the three humors. So the yes. aim is to bring that back to a certain kind of a balance mm -hmm. by removing the excesses. Okay. And after that, you do a specific practice of yoga to make the different life currents in the body to come under your control. Okay. That is the idea. So that you are not a victim of your programming. Okay. A yogi is a person who is not a victim of one's own programming. What, what does this programming says? Programming, you have a physical programming where uh, you have these different urges that your body has in different situations based on how you have conditioned the body. 
plus the genetic uh, makeup, plus the, mm -hmm. the heredity and the culture and everything. Plus the natural defense mechanisms. Mechanisms, that, that yes, you have. yes, yes, and the okay. reaction mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So some for some you have a, a higher allergic reaction. So if your vata is imbalanced, you you tend to be more uh, having a higher allergy reactions. If your pitta is uh, uh, imbalanced, you tend to get too angry or lose your balance, your adrenaline pumps too much, mm -hmm. hyper, uh, hyperactive. If your kapha is too much, you get depressed and get stuck in something. Do, do yogis live more than uh, normal people? Yeah, that is not the uh, uh, approach to yogic healing. This is a very good question you asked me. It's, it's an European question. Anyway. Yes, yes, yes. yes. When we come to yoga therapy, yes. when we come to yoga as a therapy, our aim should be first to prevent the problem that has not yet come first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Heyam Prevent the sorrow that has not yet occurred. Patanjali Yoga Sutra. And second, when we are solving a problem, we see the disease, we go to the root of the disease, okay. which is the fundamental psychosomatic disorder that is sustaining this disease, mm -hmm. and we remove that. That is the okay. approach. Noi nadi, noi mudal nadi. The, find the disease, find the root of the disease, and do what is required to clear the root of the disease. This is the approach. And uh, if you read That's Ayurveda, correct. Ayurveda, mm -hmm. in there is a text called Charaka Samhita. In Charaka Samhita, he says, the root of all diseases is in the disturbance of the psyche. Pragna aparadam hi mulam roganam. Which I agree. Yes, and which is the fundamental approach of the healing of Zalmoxis. If you see in that Plato's, uh, some writing I heard about, where uh, Socrates yes, I, meets I have uh, also read. Yes. Uh, uh, so Socrates meets a Dutchian doctor in the battlefield, mm -hmm. and he talks about the healing of Zalmoxis, where he says, "If you have to heal the eye, I have to heal the head. The head, yes. If you have to heal the I head, remember. I have to heal the uh, heal the whole person's body. And if mm -hmm. I have to heal the whole body, I have to heal the psyche. This is exactly yoga therapy, and this is what we follow in the approach. I see. So you uh, tend to have a more uh, or a better personality at, at all its levels and you don't care uh, for example for uh, long other, life yes. other long life yeah, aspects. long life there are two aspects to it one is the karmic aspect they say the day you are born when you will die is already written you can't you, do anything you have about a number it. of breathings so i'm coming okay karmically how you will die when you will die is already written Certain major events are part, part of your prarabdha karma. Mm -hmm. So mostly 99% you cannot do anything about it. So it's still 1% you will keep for God. Okay. So now uh, there is another part of this longevity which is the number of breaths that you say. Okay. So that is where the potential to prolong your life naturally provided there is no, if you are not having a bad karma to die an unnatural death okay in war in natural calamities or mm -hmm, snake mm -hmm. bite mm -hmm. instead of all this if you are uh, not having this kind of uh, problems in your horoscope the natural lifespan can be extended how pranayama by pranayama so when you when you um, regulate for example if you observe your breathing now right now if you mm -hmm. observe your breathing you will see the exhalation is st longer and more powerful than the inhalation. For you? <laughs> for generally. Yeah. Generally for people. This is how it is. So when you, what you have to do is you, ha you can prolong the inhalation a little more and slow down the exhalation. So then what happens? The downward and the upward currents equalize in here. Mm -hmm. but that is the what uh, we understand by this uh, star of David. You know this. Uh, yes. The upward and downward triangles, triangles yes there. okay so there is prana and apana mm -hmm. when the prana and apana is unified and you maintain that that equilibrium all the time and also you take care of your mind not to agitate and get into different uh, uh, attraction and repulsion mechanisms mm -hmm. that inner pranic stability when it is maintained and the equilibrium is maintained your lifespan will increase automatically and there are advanced techniques where you bring the prana and keep the prana rotating only inside the body. So this is the method of the Siddhas, which I learned from one group, mm -hmm. which is popularly 
talked about as this kriya yoga you know what they call yes, as kriya yoga, kriya yoga the branded kriya yoga uh, that is called vasi yoga in uh, in the siddha system and where the uh, the life force lives inside the body does not leave the measure of the body okay one pr- the whoever practices this will not die physically they will enter something called as jiva samadhi where you enter a live tomb you take a tomb alive uh-huh and you take the prana inside and go into samadhi the final samadhi and they will go on for a few hundred years according to the power of their austerity the body will stay for some time and then they leave the body through the head and the body disintegrates this is what is uh, practice but it is an abnormal of the out of the box solution we don't mm-hmm. need to discuss about it for mm-hmm. normal people if they keep the equilibrium of the prana and apana life span will go to the maximum you can extend the life span to the maximum that much is fine i understand um yes and uh, after the break we'll discuss where the soul goes through the through your yes. head and <laughs> what what do you think yes. about god and what do we yes. think about god and uh what do we know about god and uh, yes. yes okay sure definitely rubrica Școala Spirituală Nic Namțu are câteva întrebări pentru invitatul nostru Sri Yogesh Varkartik Nic va spune întrebările în limba română fiindcă Yogesh Var înțelege puțin română iar dacă vor fi mici neînțelegeri am să mă străduiesc să, să traduc Nic, te rog frumos să, să Am încerc. ascultat cu mare interes ceea ce ne-a spus Yogeshwar. Sunt multe informații pe care eu am luat cunoștință acum și pe parcursul dialogului vostru mi-a fost un pic să intervin fiindcă era un dialog care avea multe de spus și n-ar fi avut mă rog, momentul de a într-o pe acest moment. Aș vrea să te întreb, Yogeshwar, dacă în cursurile de yoga există probleme cu care se confruntă cursanții, dacă sunt, evident, fiindcă eu recunosc că, deși am câteva exerciții practic, practice de yoga, salutul soarelui, sorry, mm. Uh, totuși mă confrunt cu problema vizualizării mm. și probabil că asta e o lipsă de uh, să spunem ori practică, ori că nu este o concentrare ai putea să dai măcar un mie un răspuns iar celelalte probleme dacă sunt uh, așa cum stai, ajunge cât ai spus că să Uh, did, did you got uh, yeah, almost almost okay uh, so he says uh, about uh, the major problems that uh, uh, people who are practicing yoga are facing and about his problem with sun visualization not able to visualize for example yes 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 yes, yes. Uh, the, generally the problems what people are facing mean major yes that okay so first i will solve your problem because you are next to me so then i will go to the public okay <laughs> yeah. okay see uh, visualization is not the it's not absolutely essential for sun salutation there are so many approaches to doing that for asana for example if you see patanjali yoga sutra it talks about relaxation of effort and meditation on the limitless as a tool for stabilizing a posture okay prayatna shaitilya ananta samapatti bhyam relaxation of effort 
means Understand. all the unnecessary effort required for example if i am sitting like this to sit like this i don't need to bite my teeth okay not required so i can relax my eyes relax my mouth teeth but suppose if i have to sit straight without a back support i cannot slouch i need a effort to keep my back up no i have to push my hip up mm -hmm. so now this is the relevant effort but okay. to tighten my neck is irrelevant effort okay so when we do a posture keep the relevant effort required to sustain the posture relax every other effort which is not part of the posture understand so that means relaxing all the irrelevant effort and keeping the mind on the endless for example when you are in a posture think you are going to stay in the posture forever your life is finished now you have arrived at this posture and that's it you are not going to get out of this posture okay it's like your grave you know whatever you know you are done that is that is the end of your life you are going to be in that posture forever then how you would be in time and in space you can visualize uh, uh, you can uh, if it is something to do with bending or balancing you can focus on the center of gravity for example you are sitting now the weight of the body aligns in a certain way suppose if i turn like this the weight shifts to my left thigh okay so the point where the center of gravity line falls be aware of that just feel the weight you know if you, you can do it right now you just shift the weight like this like this and feel it yes just feel it and when you sit you see the center of gravity allow the mind to converge in the center of gravity and you will get the posture you don't need to visualize understand thank you this is the traditional method then visualizing can come but visualizing don't strain your visual faculty visualizing means only thinking for example in sun salutation one thing that is very useful you connect your lower tantian in what they say you know or that hara, nabhi chakra or, yes mm -hmm. there you have to feel the life force there and connect that life force there is your ego inside the life force okay the ego principle operating within the life force you have to connect it to the image of the rising sun you can remember a rising sun you had in the beach one day so some constant or somewhere some rising sun we remember remember that rising sunrise experience and just connect the ego here to the rising sun that is enough immediately your prana will expand But yes. do, do I have to understand that he doesn't needs visualization? It's not visualization necessary for him. Visualization is not absolutely him. essential. No, not absolutely essential. What, what are the essential uh, uh, And, facts uh, for him? Uh, for that we have to understand the nature of the person. So when I suppose if I work with you, I will know what are the what is your fundamental nature? What are you doing yoga for? And what technique you are doing? So that tells you what are the aspect I should emphasize. so it is very very individual specific visualization as a general instruction is fine now we will come to that part he asked about what are the difficulties faced by people who practice yoga mm -hmm. the first difficulty for a yoga person is to accept that yoga is part and parcel of hindu spirituality yoga is not secular okay yoga is connected with god the only way in which we present yoga is the one word if you want one word that describes yoga it is called ishvara pranidhana surrendering to god that is yoga okay. so without knowledge of god there cannot be yoga so yoga cannot be seen separate from the veda and the vedanta okay and when i that it's spiritual that, science uh, uh, it's like spiritual science it is a spiritual method connected to spiritual knowledge we should not call it spiritual science technically because it is not empirical knowledge science the scientists will jump if you say spiritual science if there's some scientist seeing here the person will jump right there in the couch no uh, <laughs> i was i was telling it as a metaphor uh, yes yes a sign it is we can say logical it is mm -hmm. logical it is not against logic okay it is not against science but it is not scientific no 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 not scientific yes yes yes, yes. it was a so metaphor so it is a it is a spiritual method let us call it method mm -hmm. spiritual okay. method connected to spiritual knowledge so now this is the first thing they have to accept which means they look up to the body of spiritual knowledge mm -hmm. 
which is supporting yoga they look up to this body of spiritual knowledge as valid true knowledge okay. when i read in the newspaper uh, some uh, ukraine occupation some russian troops something we may read i don't see that i only hear from the newspaper on the news channel and they consider it as valid information mm -hmm. okay so this is called apta vakya apta vakya means trustworthy information from a source that is trustworthy which gives me information that i cannot get by my perception and by my analysis alone okay and which is not against my perception and my analysis and which is useful three categories we have to take the in spiritual knowledge is not available for my perception and, and analysis okay if science can tell me something i don't need scripture for that okay so and what the scripture tells me is not against my uh, uh, perception and knowledge it might add an element to it like sunrise and sunset is true experientially astronomically it is not true there is no sunrise there is no sunset so when science tells me there is no sunrise there is no sunset i give benefit of doubt to the science and wait for me to develop the understanding i don't Correctly. i don't tell that the science is telling my father is a liar when he told me that uh, let us enjoy sun uh, we will go to the beach and enjoy sunrise this summer in the beach then in the last day of school my physics teacher tells me science teacher tells me there is no sunrise my holiday is at stake are you <laughs> are you calling my father a liar can i get emotional about it i have to wait and then talk about this to my father maybe he has studied a little more and then discuss it and wait for some time wait till i go to high school where i will understand oh it's astronomy still i can enjoy my sunrise but the sun does not rise spiritual knowledge is like this yeah. so i have to wait trust i have to trust the vedic wisdom the wisdom of the seers and the sages and wait i have to accept that as valid knowledge first this is the most difficult part for the yoga people especially from the west we call it as shraddha confidence pending knowledge okay a trust pending knowledge like how i trust my kindergarten teacher okay like this so this is the most difficult part then the next second difficult part you once this is solved everything else is solved so they are not able to bend down to a spiritual authority they are not able to bend down to god they want to do everything themselves and they they are not able to bend down in front of this universal order you know this this is most difficult part and uh, once this comes everything comes so this is why i want to emphasize on this and the other difficult part would be lifestyle one practical aspect i would like to say is uh, the requirements of discipline in food the requirements of discipline in uh, not becoming too weird in the eyes of society either one extreme they become very weird people yoga yoga people are all strange funny guys you know mm -hmm. like that yes or they don't want to take yoga seriously simply because they cannot stop drinking wine they cannot stop drink, eating meat this is another extreme so one okay. has to find the art of navigating without losing social appropriateness but at the same time how do i hold my position okay i have my commitment for my growth inner growth which i will not compromise for the society's sake if somebody wants me to eat a pig on easter i don't have to eat but i can always sit with my parents in the easter dinner of course and it is going to take 4 or 5 years for them to understand but once they understand you can always focus on see i am here i am here for you mm -hmm. i respect you i can even serve you the pig but i will not eat the pig that yes. is that should be fine so how to strike this balance between me being committed to my practice at the same time not to be socially inappropriate too much you cannot avoid sometimes you have to be in a, you will end up being inappropriate sometimes you go wrong yeah. anyway. yes and sometimes uh, you being right itself may be a problem for somebody we don't have to bother about that within the sensible limits let me try to be socially appropriate okay this balance is very difficult for the people i see here this they have to learn that's yes. that uh, art will come when they get exposed to traditional teaching one picks this up in the background automatically so uh, this is something anything else you want to ask any specific difficulty you have noticed if you ask me i can elaborate on that
I, I have noticed um, difficulties on uh, even on the Western spiritual path. On, what is that? Uh, on respecting, uh, in fact, not respecting yama and niyama. They they have a, a big problem with moral percepts, and they want to they want to have the results, but yes. not to observe the discipline. We have to educate them on the connection between the rules and the results. They don't see the connection. If they see the connection, they will do. If, if yes. the doctor uh, says, you know, you have hyperacidity, don't don't drink coke. Mm -hmm. If you have hyperacidity, or don't eat spicy food, they understand the connection. Yes, so but if they don't understand, they don't respect uh, this it. This is some rule. They think it's all religion, you know, it's all superstition. This is the problem. Mm -hmm. Because they don't treat spiritual knowledge as knowledge. They treat spirituality as a religion uh, or as a dogma or they treat it as a, some authority that they want. They don't want to obey. This is the problem. I, I can understand that even the crisis that the Western world is facing now, even the economic crisis, yes. is because of a moral crisis. Yes, definitely. It's it's the same problem on on the society on mm -hmm. on the big level, and how how do you see, uh, how how could we make someone understand, the connection between the moral percepts, and the supreme realization in life and obtaining the benefits? How 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 could you connect yama and niyama? Yes. To to the realization in life. Realization, you are talking about enlightenment? Yes. Uh, we should not market enlightenment, first of all. Enlightenment and uh, spiritual realization is not for marketing. We don't need to talk about that to anybody. No, no, no. I, I was not referring to marketing. Just explain. No, this is I'm telling. Yes, yes, explain. That we don't have to use the enlightenment word at all. Unless the person asks for liberation, we don't talk about it. I, 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 I agree with Hindu that. Approach. I, I agree with that. Hindu you should not like sell this. this. Yes, it's, it's the not traditional for sale. Hindu approach. Mm -hmm. to what you said is what the person is looking for what does he or she wants mm -hmm. by themselves okay so they, what do you want they will say something right mm -hmm. so based on what they want we have to package the knowledge okay this is very important okay so that they see the benefit directly and the connection between what they have to do and what they want to achieve must be established and this puts a great challenge on those who want to teach. Because yes. a person who wants to teach cannot afford to have a personal agenda if you want the student to benefit. The moment as a teacher I have my personal agenda, the student cannot benefit. Of course. This is the problem in the West. Those who teach have a personal agenda. Once you become a spiritual teacher, you cannot, we have to forget the idea of business. That is why in India, a Brahmin, ideally, mm -hmm. nowadays it's all gone, but ideally a Brahmin is supposed to live on bhiksha, arms. Yes. And he is not supposed to amass property. As the property comes like a trust, you know, like an NGO, as people donate to him property, he is to, supposed to keep giving. So the property given for a Brahmin is only for distribution and for performing rituals. A person who is devoted to knowledge cannot be devoted to wealth too much. And the Agreed. person who is devoted to creating wealth, his spirituality is predominantly centered around sharing. A person who is ruling the kingdom is, is responsible for management of the resources. You know, the gold mine is under his care. He's just a manager. Yes. He's yes. just a manager. Yes. So his, his job is to make sure the right people get the right due. Okay. Equitable distribution of wealth, that is the job of the king. Because a trader will not do that because the trader is fundamentally focused on amassing wealth. And the king cannot be a victim of the luxury. A, a king was always ready for austerity. Even today, if you go to India, there is a temple in East India called Puri, Puri Jagannath. It's a very famous mm -hmm. temple. There, when the chariot starts, the Puri king, the local king, will come and sweep the cart. Mm -hmm. Car and in front of the car, he will sweep it. Mm -hmm. And then he will start. So the king is first there to serve the Lord, okay. who is in the form of society. Okay. So this is the philosophy. But uh, you see the human nature everywhere. Yes here in India, in England, it doesn't matter. Yes, the in human Germany, nature. 
yes, the human nature is making a confusion between uh, the king and uh, the trader. Yes, and also uh, what we can, there, are, there is a concept called dharma. We have what is called dharma and the dharma is very specific. Dharma has to be understood for who, at what period of time, in what context. I know, but uh, people tend, tend to jump over it. That will be Th there. This, this is human because nature. Because the question was how to convey this to them. When we are able to remind a person of what they consider as their duty first. He or she will take what he wants anyway. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So what, what we can what do, do is to take? we can try to understand what they think is their, their duty. What are you mm -hmm. supposed to do? Because this is his natural evolution. Yes, and even what a person considers as one's own duty, mm -hmm. that itself they forget. Okay. They try to trample over it. Like uh, if I have a, a sink full of vessels in my kitchen, mm -hmm. every time I cross the lobby, I look at the kitchen and see who is going to wash it or when to wash it. <laughs> so I know this is my duty to wash, but that hesitation is there. Yes. So sometimes people need a little bit of prodding to do what they know is right. We can start with that. Yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that is their human nature. The best. Yes. I, I agree. <laughs> and we can pray for the person. This is all we can do. Because in the West, the ego is very strong. They will not listen to anything. This is one thing I see. And it becomes stronger in the last yes. years. Yeah. What Romania can do, uh, let's forget about the West, West. But for yes. Romania, you have a great culture. You have a a uh, very great past, the pre-Roman past. The more Romania it comes in touch, people, they come in touch with the energy and the consciousness of this land, the values. Mm -hmm. The values that, you know, when I give a box of food to somebody, yes. mm -hmm. the box does not come back empty. They put at least one apple inside that and yes. then, this is something phenomenal. This shows the depth of the culture. Yes. Like this, you can see everywhere. So, if uh, they are able to appreciate the local traditional culture, that is a, can be a very good starting point. Instead of looking for exotic, some healing from Japan, some technique mm -hmm, from Argentina, mm -hmm. some technique from Sweden. Yes, you, you can use their yes, uh, yes. own culture yes. to, to First, let me understand. get grounded in my dharma, my culture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me imbibe my cultural values. After that, whatever is missing, I can look for somewhere else. But without assimilating my own cultural values, why should I go and look for something from India, something from Japan, something from... It's not necessary. Let me exhaust what I have. Let me finish the food which is in my fridge first. Which they usually don't Yes. Do. Then go to the supermarket. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Very, very interesting answer. We're it's the same approach we use. Yes. It's... Uh, I, I told you it's a, it's a good bridge between the, the two cultures. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll... Uh, We'll take a short break now. Yes, sure. Thank you. Cartea lui Ștefan vă prezintă în această seară, cu ajutorul lui Sri Yogeshwar, două volume din, referitoare la cunoștințele de bază din Vedanta, dar am să-l rog chiar pe el să vă spună câteva cuvinte. Yogeshwar, please show yes. the books on the camera and tell, the, tell a few things about the main ideas that... Uh, yes, and can I tell about the author also? Yes, yes of course, sure. it's no problem. Yes, we have, uh, I have brought two books here. They are usually part of a set. Uh, but fundamentally, the subject is Vedanta. Vedanta is uh, the fourth portion, the knowledge portion, the portion of the Vedas, the revealed spiritual knowledge. But the revealed spiritual knowledge needs certain commentaries and authoritative uh, exposition 
which takes you closer to that. So one of the main teachers who helped us understand the true meaning of Vedanta was Sri Shankaracharya. So, and according to the Shankara Advaita, which I follow in the teaching. So these two books are, uh, uh, one of them is, for example, this book contains, this book contains the basic concepts of spiritual knowledge. If you really want to understand what is what, for example, when I say soul, Okay. No, people use the word soul left and right. But what is soul? They are without words. This is something that I have encountered. We don't have such vague terms in our uh, scriptures like soul, mm -hmm. mind. No, every term is very well defined according to the context. In, in Romania, it's usually a vague uh, term, soul. It's, we have it's this problem. It, yes. it, 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 it's, it's vague bad. everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, and also you will not mix the occidental ideas and try to see the uh, Sanskrit words and the spiritual terminology of the Vedanta and Yoga in the framework of the West. That is a very pro uh, inappropriate important, yes, uh, yeah. and uh, it is counterproductive. Mm -hmm. So to understand what is what of spirituality and to obtain a framework, you, you may not be a Hindu, you may not be a, but if you are somebody who is interested in general spirituality, you may not be a direct student of Vedanta or Yoga, but even if you are somebody interested in a general spirituality, to know what is what of the important categories and the terminologies, this book will help. Prakarana means a book of definitions. All the important terms like for example, there is a text, it, it deals with one text called Tattva Bodha. Tattva Bodha means the teaching of the truth, mm -hmm. the reality, the revelation of the reality as it is, where it talks about the body the astral body, the causal body, what are the pranas, how is your subtle body constructed and how the five elements come, what is the relationship between the five elements of our body and the five elements of the universe and what happens uh, for a person who gains enlightenment and what is this enlightenment. All okay. the most important points are described in the Tattva Bodha. And uh, you have the, generally the, uh, uh, the exposition of uh, the different terminologies as a like a prose text so she has a lot of illustrative uh, diagrams you know oh, very interesting uh, a, a, a lot of illustrative diagrams where she compares the three tattvas and the three gunas sattva rajas and tamas mm -hmm. how each quality influences different aspects of a personality and th this general discussion is this book mm -hmm. general discussion and translation of very important texts of written by shankaracharya okay which gives you in a capsule the essential wisdom of Vedanta. So it's just like a resume or... Uh... It is like a synopsis of the essential aspects of the wisdom from the Veda. Okay. The wisdom part of the Veda. You cannot easily study the Upanishads. It's very exhaustive. So one has to go through a teacher and uh -huh. he was the first person in the teaching tradition and he has composed a lot of texts which we use regularly in our teaching. So if one wants to attend the classes also, these books are helpful. And what is beautiful about these two books is the person, uh, Daniela Bada, she is the head of Chinmaya Mission in Romania. And uh, we are all here talking Vedanta. Okay. Because of Swami Chinmayananda. If he was not there, the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads would not be open to public as easily as it is now. Very It is like Philokalia, it is only in a small circles. Mm -hmm. Because of the information revolution, it was available. If you imagine Philokalia 500 years back, who would even get an access to Philokalia? Almost no one. Yes. Upanishads was like that. Until Swami Chinmayananda came and opened it up. So we all have a gratitude to him. And she is the president of the Chinmaya Mission. She is the founder of the Chinmaya Mission in Romania. And she has studied. She has stayed in India for months together and studied. And uh, she is devoted. She is uh, personally, she is a practitioner devoted to the practice devotional practices and she has taken initiation from a Swamiji and uh, uh, she is devoted to the Vedanta vision in her own life. Mm -hmm. And she takes care not to bring the western framework into it but try to present as authentically as possible. Okay. It is not enough, there can be improvements. For example, uh, in the book where she defines about, uh, gives the general definitions, there okay. she talks about uh, the historical context of Vedanta which, which uh -huh. is a mistake which I pointed, is a common mistake, mm -hmm. that she does. Uh, that I think she, when I asked her, she said it is for the sake of uh, the Westerners to appreciate more. 
which is an error which need not be done. Like this, a few things are there. But when it comes to the terminology, okay. the translation precision is very high among mm -hmm. the other books. When I discussed with my students, with the other translations available in the market, her translation this is very is closest available right now uh -huh. to see. the original source. I and see. so I recommend this book for uh, those who are interested in uh, to, uh, to have a feel, you know. It gives you an authentic mm -hmm. feel of what of, it is about. Of, of the phenomenon. Yes. yes. And if you want to use as a supporting text, if you commit for a spiritual study. Mm -hmm. And it also provides you with a framework, a framework with which you can understand all the spiritual practices. Suppose if you bring any spiritual school to me, I will be able to discuss any spiritual school because I have a universal framework. Yes, which is, is very good. Yeah, it is because a mathematician can solve any problem, mm -hmm. which is logically tenable. Like that. A person who is exposed to Vedantic uh, framework of knowledge, that methodology, mm -hmm. will be able to understand any branch of spirituality as it is. Yeah, that's a very good recommendation. And for that, this book is very useful for Romania. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. At, uh, at the next part of our show, yes. you brought us a surprise. Yes. It's about a movie, and I yes. uh, am expecting, I'm uh, looking forward to hear. Uh, to hear you speaking about this movie. Yeah, these movies touched my heart very much because uh, they show the contrast of the manipulative and the controlling and the exploiting demonic nature of the Roman Empire pitched against the inherent goodness of the Dachic civilization. Mm -hmm. So that was touching me uh, very deeply because it is very similar to what happened in India. I, I imagine that you And there is the a same certain thing. scene from that movie that really shows the depth of the source of your culture here. So mm -hmm, I wanted to mm -hmm. share. I, I'm looking forward to, yes. to hear you comment about the, yes. about the movie. Sure, yes. I will we'll have it after the movie. After the break, yes. Yeah. Salut, Tecebal! Fit binevenit, generale Severus. Ce soli îmi trimite stăpânul tău? Domitian, împărat al Romei, a descifrat cu bună voință mesajul tău și îți răspunde. Primește supunerea ta. El va veni la Sarmi Segetuza și te va încorona cu mâinile sale regi al Daciei, client al neînvinsei Rome. Iar pe tine, Decebal, Pentru meritele tale, senatul te va numi pe viață prieten al poporului roman. Am terminat. Generale Severus, după obiceiul străbunilor, sunteți oaspeții noștri. Beți din vinul acestui pământ unde s-a născut Dionisos. Iar mâine vom vorbi despre stăpâni și sclavi, pentru că mâine ne vom cunoaște mai bine. Ha? E rândul tău, Romanule. Vreau să te întreb ceva, Decebal. Pe unde mă poartă destinul și zei, încerc să pricep viața celor cu care luptăm. Spune-mi, de ce râd Daci înainte de a muri? Te lauzi, romanului, că ai văzut Daci murind. Pe da, dar nu-i ocupă de vinul aspetului nostru. Iartă-mă, tată. Nu servesc un roman. Romanul acesta este oaspetele meu. Doar ne vin meda. Vă 
războinicule, ia și tu niște smeuri. Iartă-mi insistența de cebal, dar e foarte important pentru mine. De ce râd daci înainte de a muri? Zamolxes ne-a dat mai multe vieți, Severus. Cum se cuvine să plecăm din această viață spre alta în care ni se vor dezvălui alte taine ale cerului și pământului? Plângând și văietându-ne, orzând, ca Zamolxes să vadă bucuria și mulțumirea noastră. Dar romanii, cum mor, generale Severus? O să-i vedem noi curând. Iartă-i pe copiii mei, generale. Sunt ca lupii tineri. Trebuie să muște ca să le crească dinții. De unde ai luat acest medalion? Îl am de la tatăl meu. Atius era singurul roman a cărui moarte n-am dorit-o. Sunt multe lucruri pe care nu le înțelegem, Severus. Suntem ca o scoică și aș vrea să cuprindă nea întreg vuietul mării cu toate tainele ei. Aș dori mult să înțeleg de ce bab. Vino cu mine și ai să înțelegi. Ceva cu adevărat inedit. Și Yogesh Var va uh, spune câteva cuvinte, va comenta aceste frumoase secvențe și înălțătoare secvențe pentru noi din uh, filmul Daci pe care tocmai l-am văzut. Uh, Yogesh Var, please, uh, yes. tell us your uh, opinion about... Uh... Yes, there are two important points I saw in this scene that uh, we shared with them. Uh, one is where he... For a second he gets angry with that Roman intimidation. And okay. within a couple of seconds, he comes back to balance mm -hmm. and remembers the value from which he should act, the eternal value, which, he, which is part of his tradition, to treat a guest with honor. No matter what he, what is he here for, mm -hmm. even though it is for conquering us, let, let, him, let us treat him as a friend and as a guest. And he says, everybody can be our friends, but nobody can be our master. Is that the spirit of the Romanian people? Yes, uh, I hope it lives. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure it lives. Yes. And uh, another very important point he talks about, he asks, so why do the Dacians laugh while they are dying? There he brings the knowledge of reincarnation. Zalmoxis has given us it. yes, yeah. Zalmoxis has given us many lives. So we want to take the gift with an uh, open heart. He when he tells about how we should prepare ourselves to live and evolve in these m multiple lives. Mm -hmm. So melancholy and sadness and depression is not a part of this culture. And this is a hallmark of spirituality in Hinduism. And this is the central point of healing. Never make sorrow a virtue. Suffering and sorrow is not a virtue. Any spirituality that is based on suffering and sorrow should be rejected into the trash. Mm -hmm. And the Romanian spirituality is not based on suffering and sorrow, but it is based on laughing while you are dying because you know you are eternal yes this i would like the people to take home with them that's it and uh, we we thank you very much for uh, coming to our show you have just showed the strong connection between your people and my people and uh, <laughs> we will be more than happy to have you here another time and to Thank speak you. to us thank you i'm very happy I'm very glad thank you uh, i would uh, finish with one small we please. believe in what is called as vasudeva kutumbakam the whole creation not only humans when we pray we say sanno astu dvipade sham chatushpade may all the two legged be happy may all the four legged be happy that is our prayer very interesting the whole yeah. universe is part of one family the lord's family of vasudeva the divine being who lives in everything so this is our approach so, so that way we are all part of one family Wonderful. Yes, it, it is wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Thank you. 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 Thank